And by the way, I'm now recording the session. Finally, I remembered to do that. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody with anything they want to say about that, so we'll switch it up a little bit. Does anybody have a question regarding the class? You can either raise your hand or chat it. Okay, for you guys that are thinking about what we're going to do about exam three, I gave exam three for my 141 class uh, at 9 o'clock today, and it went pretty well, uh, didn't have any you know, big issues. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get questions over into sampling, and um, I will send you guys a announcement as that's progressing so I haven't got much more to say about it at this point but anyway um, be expecting that the exam to actually happen next week uh, you know, like Monday or Friday but I'll give you time it's going to be Monday okay and uh, otherwise let's take a look at Blackboard and see if there's anything going on over there we ought to talk about. Okay, so on your Blackboard class page, um, just a repeat um, here. If you're having either computer issues or internet connection issues, I've uh, got a couple sort of suggestions here uh, with with that so you know you know check those out and the one that's really you know time sensitive is the computer issue if your computer is just not getting it for doing this uh, you should make a request to borrow a laptop from the school and uh, you need to do that right away because they're doing the distribution of that this afternoon so you'd have to run over to the school in the afternoon assuming that they you know grant your request uh, the other thing I want to mention uh, announcement is that our peer mentor is starting today and that's Alvaro um, and let's see he'll be our peer mentor for the remainder of the semester he'll be doing this stuff all online and collaborate or he can respond to an email and get back to you with something. So Alvaro had this class uh, last, probably last spring or something like that. And he's also done 141, so he's familiar with both of those. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to be hosting uh, help sessions on Wednesdays, uh, 5 to 6 in the evening. Thursdays 2.30 to 4.30, Fridays 3 to 5, and Sundays 11 to 12. So, uh, I mean, he'd probably appreciate it if you shot him an email to let him know you're going to be at one of those. But on the other hand, you could, you know, just drop in. And uh, the way you're going to do those is that you'll come to, you know, the course page, just like you did today, uh, go to Collaborate, and he should be there waiting for you. If you got any questions, you can email him at his email address that's here. It's also should be over in the contact information. Let's check and make sure. Yeah, his email address is here too. So you could go down to where it says uh, instructor and peer mentor contact information if you want to email him. So that pretty much takes care of the announcements. Um, let's see. Um, we're going to be doing a lab today, so we'll be getting to that in just a second. I do want to take a look at sapling, make sure we're all good there. So let's see, we're currently in the thermal dynamics chapter. Or wait a minute, we actually, let's see, yeah, we did. We, we moved on from that, and we're now in the quantum theory chapter so you guys have seen everything you need to see to be able to successfully complete the topic introduction and the homework so those are due tonight you know right before midnight so getting back over if 
from that. Uh, and I'm going to stop the sharing. <clears throat> Anybody got a problem with being able to complete those assignments and sampling tonight? Now, hopefully you haven't waited to the last minute because we don't know what the internet could possibly do. Uh, okay. I need to look at that message one more time. Okay. Hi, Brenda. Okay, that's fine. Thanks for letting me know. So, okay. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, okay. Um, so, anyway, is there any question about any of that stuff before we move on to the uh, lab today? Okay, I'm not seeing anything. So, but if you think of some, you know, just chat it. Uh, and or raise your hand we can deal with that yeah Gary how about the chapter 6 homework uh, let's see okay right now it is still scheduled for April 11 um, you are you basically saying that you think that's going to be difficult to be done by by then? Oh, okay. Thanks for telling me that. Um, and okay, I see May saying she may have connectivity issues. Yeah. Well, we'll try to you know, work with that as best we can. Um, okay, so let's see. What can I do about the sampling assignments? Okay, yeah, I can move those out some. We still have enough time. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to push those out to a week from today. I think that'll give you guys a chance to get those done. Okay, so uh, just to show everybody that, <laughs> hey, you don't have to do all that kind of stuff. Just tell me if you're not going to get it done. That's enough. Anyway, uh, okay, I want to share my screen just to show you guys uh, what is the story there. Um, so now, um, so now the chapter six stuff is due on the 15th that's a week from today so give you enough time to, to, to get on with those so but is anyone having an issue with the chapter 5 stuff today you can be honest if you've been putting it off to the last minute you need to tell me Okay, I'm not hearing from anybody, so I'm going to leave that the way it is. So uh, we'll get on to doing the lab here. Um, so you'll need to, in Blackboard, go to course materials. And you guys are going to be doing them uh, in group, just like we've done previously. So, But anyway, you'll need to go to course materials, click on lab reports, and only be seeing the ones that are relevant to you these other ones are already gone um, and these other ones have not happened yet so anyway uh, so we're doing the heat of neutralization simulation and there is an attached file that is instructions for this so I'll click it and it's going to pop up right here I'll come back to that in a second it says this assignment is the simulation of some calorimetry experiments there's a link to the simulation here. There's also a link in the uh, instructions, so either way. After completing the experiments, produce a – boy, I don't quite understand that. 
text there. Let me figure that one out. Um, oh! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I know what you're talking about, Ashley. Uh, yeah, um, before all this mess, my, my mother had a heart attack and a stroke, and she's okay. Uh, I'm an only child, so I had to come down. I am down around Carbondale right now. And I am, um, you know, me and my wife are, are, are helping her, although she's doing pretty good. She can get around uh, and everything. So, so she, you know, she dodged a bullet on that whole thing pretty much. But, um, but anyway, with the current COVID situation, we can't have anybody coming here to the house and trying to take care of her or anything crazy like that. So, Anyway, we're at her place. I got the back door open. Her yard has a bunch of bird feeders and bird houses and stuff. Lots and lots and lots of birds. So that's, uh, I don't know what kind of bird that is. It's some kind of bird. Might be a cardinal. Okay, so uh, let's now get back to the lab. So anyway, you're going to do a lab report. Uh, title date, partners, uh, you got four sets of discussion questions, one from each experiment, one, two, three, and four. And then you've got a data table for experiment five, a data table for experiment six, and your comments. Now, the, um, the thing is, uh, we're going to be doing this in the form of a, the, the simulation is not going to be, to start out with, it's not going to be just a open-ended thing. It's going to it's going to direct you through it with some yellow arrows to point up to what you should be uh, changing on the simulation thing. So those the experiments one through four is getting you accustomed to the way the simulation works. But then when you go to five and six, those are open-ended. Those are uh, experiments that you're going to be putting in all the information. But the information is given in the instructions, so it should not be a problem. Just make sure you're taking good notes, writing down what the results are as you're going along. So look at the instructions here, calorimetry simulation. In the simulation, click on this link. I already did. We'll go to that in a second. You'll direct a simulation experiment for the heat and neutralization lab. Follow the instructions. Open the link. Click on experiment, followed by run demonstrations. So this first time, you're going to be doing the, the demonstration for the experiments, for the first four experiments. Uh, the directions are given for four demonstrations or four experiments. You'll complete the instructions, answer the questions on the computer, and also take notes of your answers. Okay. I think what will happen, I didn't really try it out, but I think if you answer the questions wrong, it's going to redirect you so that you are able to answer those questions correctly because you need to be able to do that to do the last two experiments. So like for this first one, uh, so you're going to have 100 grams of 50 degree water, 100 grams of 20 degree water. You're going to mix those together, um, and then you need to answer this question about the 20 degree and the 50 degree water. And then you're going to describe the motion of the water molecules, and it's showing it's going to show you how to do that. Move to your next experiment. Add solid copper that you have heated up to some water, and you know. You're going to see how that would that heat flow would occur. So now I'm going to show you the the uh, simulation. There is some information here. Uh, there's also what you're going to be learning from this. But moving on to the experiment, you see how there's two choices: run demonstration, run experiment. For the first four, you're going to do the demonstration. For the last two, you're going to do the experiment. So I'm going to click on Run Demonstration. So you've got a uh, constant pressure calorimeter on the right, uh, and then they're showing you the one you would have used had we have done this in class face-to-face, -face, or it's close to what we would have had. So constant pressure calorimeter is an insulated container, contains liquids or solids during a thermal chemistry experiment and uh, involving either physical or chemical changes. And um, so we're going to, since we have the simulation, we're not going to be using the, the one on the left, uh, the uh, coffee 
cup thing. We're going to be using the fancy gadget on the right. So if you click next, it says the calorimetry prevents heat from escaping or entering a system. So you're only measuring the heat flow that's relevant to the system and the surroundings, not anything else. And um, so moving a little bit further along, this is the, the ideal calorimeter, no heat leakage. And so this is your first example. So you see that there's a beaker that's on a hot plate. And for that beaker that's on a hot plate, you can choose either a liquid or a solid or a solution. But since this is the demonstration, it's going to force you to pick a liquid. And then you're going to say, what does the liquid weigh? What's the mass of it? What's its temperature? And you got a hot plate. You can make it whatever you want it to be. And you can click in that box, and it will show the specific heat of, and if you're starting out with water, what the specific heat of water is. And then this other box applies to the constant pressure calorimeter. Again, you can have either a liquid in the calorimeter or a solid in the calorimeter or a solution in the calorimeter. And you're going to pick a liquid for this first demonstration. You're going to give it a mass, a temperature. You can show the specific heat. Now, for the first time you're doing this, it's not going to let you turn on the graph function or the microscopic view of the, uh, of the molecules. But you'll be doing that a little bit later on. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit of this and then leave you to it. So you click on and it says up here in the upper left, open the liquid menu under the beaker and select water. So I'm going to click here and I'm selecting water. So now we're going to be putting water in there. And it says using the mass slider, set the amount of water to 100 grams. So I'll move that over until it gets to 100. You can see water filled up in the, uh, in the beaker. And then you're supposed to set the temperature to 50 degrees. So we'll move that over. To 50 degrees, you see the temp temperature on the hot plate went up to 50. The little red light came on showing that it's heating that water up. And uh, we could show specific heat if we wanted to. Then uh, in the liquids menu under the calorimeter, so this is over here to the right, uh, you want to select water. So we'll click on this menu, select water. Then it says, uh, use the mass slider, set the mass on 100, so we'll do that. And then it says, set the temperature at 20 degrees. Next, it says, start. Now, we could have it show the uh, specific heat of water if we want to. So I'm going to click start. Now, the arrow is representing we have poured the water from the beaker into the calorimeter, and it started. You can see how the temperature indicator at the top is changing as the experiment's running. When we hit thermal equilibrium, the temperature stops changing, then it will let you proceed a little bit further with this. That's going to take a moment. Okay, so now it has stopped changing. It's, it has stopped at 35 degrees. So something happened with the water in the beaker to its uh, temperature. Something happened with the temperature of the water that was in the calorimeter. And you can hit the replay button if you want to. It'll do the whole thing again. There's a question on the left you need to answer. Record your answer in your notes because that needs to go in the report. Once you've successfully answered the questions, it'll direct you to the next experiment. So I'm going to put that away and go back into the chat. I'm going to kill the sharing. Has anybody got a question on how to do that? Okay, we're going to do this in groups, and I got a few more people I need to assign to groups that came in a little later, so we'll take care of that.
Okay, I think I got all you guys in your correct groups. If you, whenever I stop, whenever I activate the groups, if you realize that I have put you in the wrong group, please tell me. I'll move you to the correct group. So I'll go ahead and start it now. If you have a question while you're doing the lab, just send a chat uh, to me, and then I can respond to it. Okay, guys, I shut down the uh, groups, and we'll go over how to do those um, calculations, okay? Let's see. I need to figure out how to share this with you. Let's see. Um, okay, let's try this. Then. Okay, everybody, hang on a second. I'm going to have to move a document into the share. So this will take a second or two or more. Which calculations are we going over? Uh, the ones for experiments five and six. Some people were having issues with that, apparently. Okay. Sorry, I didn't anticipate doing this, so this will take a moment to get to get it together here. Okay. Okay, you guys ought to be able to see the instructions for this. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, try to get it as big as we can. There we are. Okay, so uh, I'm assuming then that you guys have gotten the final temperature, say, for experiment uh, five. So let's see. We've got... So we've, we've got the initial temperature here, and then we got the final temperature, right? And so it says here, get the change in temperature. So that's going to be the final minus the initial. So um, I have no idea what you guys actually got. I'll just make up some numbers, and you can do it with whatever you actually got. Uh, let's see. So... Um, I have to go back a little bit here. Okay, so your experiment five, you are 
Okay, so you're making your two solutions, uh, or excuse me, you're you're making it for solutions. Oh, okay. So in both cases, they're 20 degrees. So okay, that that works. Um, so again, we're we're going to calculate the change in the temperature here. So uh, the change in temperature is the final temperature minus the initial. So let's say that our final was 50 degrees. And so then our, so our difference is going to be 50 minus 20. And like I was saying in the chat, since there's no negative temperatures involved here, it doesn't matter if we use Kelvin or Celsius. And they gave us the specific heat capacity of both of the solutions is this number. And then they want to know what's the total mass of, of, of this mixture. So we assume both solutions are aqueous and that they have a density that's basically one gram per milliliter. So if we go back to when you're setting this up, each of these is 50 milliliters. So you've got uh, 50 milliliters of one solution plus 50 milliliters of the other solution is 100 milliliters. And then since we're saying that the density is one gram per milliliter, then this would mean also that for this, then it's going to be 100 grams. Everybody good so far? Anybody got a question? In this next part, we're trying to figure out how many moles of hydrochloric acid are in 50 milliliters of a one molar solution and how many moles of sodium hydroxide. So since these all have the same concentrations and the same volumes that we're dealing with, we only have to do that calculation one time. So uh, we've got 50 milliliters, but we're going to need liters in order to use concentration. So let's just convert that then to 0 0.05 liters. I'm taking the milliliters and dividing it by 1,000. And then we take the concentrations, and they're both uh, one mole per one liter. So that's going to end up being then 0 0.05 moles. Anybody got a question on that one? Yeah, May, what's up? Would it work to do the conversion? Like when you multiply by a by one mole over the molar mass and then um however it's done, whatever the conversion is. Um Oh, you're talking about something like the dilution formula or something like that? Because, no, it, it's not that complicated, really. Uh, the only thing, though, is that you have to have the volume in liters, and the volume was given in milliliters. But, I mean, you could start out 0.05 uh, milliliters. No, not 0.05. What am I sorry? Saying 50, you can start out 50 milliliters times one liter over a thousand milliliters times the one mole over one liter, and you get the answer. Is that what you're? No, I mean to? like if you used 50 grams instead of 50 milliliters, and then you did um did it with like the molar mass. No, 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 don't do that one. No, because these are these are both um get my. Thing working here these are both molarities for the hydrochloric acid and the sodium hydroxide so remember that one molar is equal to one mole per one liter so since you're starting with a volume 
you can use that volume to figure out how many moles you have, but you don't need to do any kind of, you don't need to convert to molar mass or anything like that at all. This is actually easier than if you were starting from grams and then, um, and oh, I see what, I see what you were thinking. The reason why that's not true here is that 50 milliliters of either one of these solutions is not just hydrochloric acid. It's hydrochloric acid and water. So if you took 50 milliliters and said, okay, that's 50 grams, and then tried to convert that into moles of hydrochloric acid, it wouldn't be right because not all of that 50 grams is hydrochloric acid. Some of that is water. Very helpful. Thank you. Okay, cool. Okay, so now you need to get how many moles of water has been produced. So um, let's see. So the equation here is that you've got sodium hydroxide plus HCl, hydrochloric acid, and that's going to produce water and sodium chloride. So if we consider the stoichiometry here, it's one to one to one to one. So if you know how many moles of either sodium hydroxide you have or hydrochloric acid, that would be the same as the number of moles of the water. So we solved that earlier here when we were doing this calc. Oops, this calc. What happened? Sorry. When we did, wow, this thing is so crazy. Okay, we did it over here. We did it over here. And so, in other words, the moles of water is gonna, is gonna be, <laughs> you know, I spent, I spent like $70 on this tablet and it's junk. Anyway, or maybe it's just me. But anyway, it's going to be 0.05 moles. You see why? You're going to get the same amount of water, same number of moles of water as you have moles of sodium hydroxide or moles of hydrochloric acid. The last thing here, well, not quite the last, but we're close. Uh, what's the heat or the energy associated with that neutralization reaction? And so they've got you a formula here that you can use. So the energy is Q, and then the mass is going to be what we figured out earlier here. So the mass is 100 grams. And then the specific heat uh, or heat capacity, same thing, uh, was given at the top here. And so it's this number right here, 4.18 joules per gram Celsius. They're doing it here. Normally it's supposed to be Kelvin. That's not exactly right. So that's going to be 4.18 and then you're going to multiply that times whatever was your temperature change so I was saying up here that if your final temperature were 50 and you started at 20 your temperature change would be 30 you just need to use whatever your final temperature was to get your temperature change but I'm going to go ahead and put that in over here And so then it's going to be 100 times 4.184 times 30. So let me get my calculator fired up here. So that's 100 times 4.184 times 30. 
Just remember your number is not necessarily 30. So after we simplify that calculation, we get 12,552 joules. And we need to know the kilojoules. So we divide that by 1,000 and we get 12. I'm going to round it 12.6 kilojoules. Anybody got a question on how we get to this? Okay, I'm not hearing anything, so we'll go over here. So now they want you to get the injuries per mole of water. And actually, you know, if you think about it, it's also per mole of sodium hydroxide, per mole of hydrochloric acid, any of these things, because they're all one mole. They're, I mean, they're all the same number of moles. So I'm going to take the 1 to the 12.6 kilojoules, and I'm going to divide that by the number of moles of water, and we've solved that up here. That's 0 0.05. So we're going to take that previous value and we're going to divide it by 0 0.05. And I get 250. 1.04. So that's the joules or the kilojoules, I mean. Kilojoules per mole. And that's your answer when you get done. So the next experiment's gonna work just like this one. Does anybody have a question now? Yeah, Jessica, what's up? So for numbers, or the ones where it's like moles of HCl and 50 milliliters, then the other ones, the moles of NaOH, are they both 0.05? Yeah, because, oh, okay. and yeah, because, because you know, the same numbers? yeah, it's the same numbers, so it's not going to change it. Okay, thank you. You betcha. Thanks for asking. Anyone else? Okay, I then if there's not another question on that, um, do you guys need to get back into your groups to talk about this some more, or are you or are you guys ready to wrap up? Either one's fine. I'll put it this way: raise your hand if you want me to put you guys back in the groups. Groups for a couple. Okay, that's all. That's all I need to hear. Okay, I can do that. Let me, uh, um, unfortunately, it takes a second because it totally forgets <laughs> what group you were in. I mean, it is a dumb program. Okay. Um,
Okay, I got everybody back in here. I'm going to push the start. If you see that you're in the wrong group, please text me.